Thank you, Tommy. Uh, we're going to go a little bit into details now and look at some work, what we did over the last 10 to 15 years here in Alberta. And one of our objectives was always to look for pathogens and prions, how they could potentially be degraded during composting. Now, one of the major things if we look at pathogens, uh, we have to divide composting. Do we have a routine composting on a day-to-day -day base where we deal with small numbers or volumes? Or is it an emergency? In case of an emergency like foot and mouse disease or an anthrax outbreak, we want to deal as quick as possible with the source and get it into, a, let's call it a biocontainment. So, what is important, and um, um, oh, let's let's define it one more time. So we hear this already from uh, other speakers. Uh, biodegradation of organic materials and under aerobic conditions, and it's executed by bacteria and fungi. And you can record temperatures up to seventy degrees. So this is one more time a short definition of composting. So what I always say if I talk about composting, if we want to do it, uh, let's do it right the first time. And when I was out in the fields and discussed with farmers or anyone who did composting, then I often face such pictures. And definitely something like this won't work and we can't consider this composting. Then uh, just a uh, comparison about the confusion between uh, finished mortality compost and I have a right and a wrong version as you can see. And from here we jump directly into the science and caucus and pathogen management. So, uh, what we looked, or our research areas we had, was the stability of pathogens, and we looked here at spores, bacteria, and virus. Uh, we looked in general on the degradation, uh, especially of bovine carcasses. So we looked at tissues, and one big part was the degradation of specified risk materials including uh, prions, which cause chronic wasting disease, uh, then mad cow disease, and scrapie. So, what was done? I brought a few pictures, and because we uh, worked with those pathogens, we had to create compost piles and, uh, in a biocontainment, and that's why we used those large straw bales. And at the second picture, let me uh, show you. This is very yeah, here. From here to here, we lined up in two piles, 16 animals each. Then we had liner, so every or we didn't have any effluent, and we could measure the amount of leachate. And then we needed those uh, pipe systems to uh, keep it aerobic, and. As uh, all the other speakers already mentioned, uh, a layer, uh, layer of straw, put the uh, animals on top, and then we uh, added manure, aerated manure, which we used a manure spreader on top of those animals. Each of the structure was around about 100,000 kilograms. I think this relates to closely 200,000 pounds. And as sampling devices, uh, we created such a metal cage where we put in our pathogens, the bacteria, the viruses, and put them uh, onto this uh, galvanized uh, iron chain into the piles close to the animal bodies. And then we filled this entire pile up and closed it and put all tires on top. So here, just one more time, our sampling device. Um, we used different layers to put uh, 
our targets in such nylon bags uh, and the nylon bags are completely exposed to uh, fungi and bacteria and yes then just in a short overview about the compost layout as I said initially we had a layer on the bottom then the animal on top then our sampling devices at different depths within the compost pile we had a leachate port on underneath the compost pile where we collected uh, all the leachates and the entire structure was surrounded by this large straw bales. Uh, keep in mind all the dimensions are in centimeters. And what we also did is we uh, put thermocouples in each mouth of each animal and then we had uh, temperature sensors in each of the sampling pyramid. When uh, after about uh, 230 days we opened all the composting structures and we found close to mm, nothing left from our animals except like here a few bones here and there but all the soft tissues uh, were, uh, disappeared. So let's jump to the results and this is one of my favorites. So initially we had this uh, galvanized uh, chain and over time they degraded as well as anything else in the compost pile. So disadvantage was we went back to a shovel and had to dig out our sampling devices at the end of the trial. Here a short overview about uh, physiochemical data and similar to uh, the other results and speakers we uh, had a quick rise of temperatures within the first 14 days and it went above 55 degrees and in our case and I explained it with the large straw bills and uh, total mass we had nice all, uh, all value so we kept the temperature at a very high level for a long, long, long time. And on the bottom here you can see the ambient temperature. And even if it uh, went down to minus 20, we were still at a comparable high level. The other things are moisture content within the compost pile. And they were in a range uh, kind of optimal for composting. So the first thing what we looked at was specified risk material and in our case we used brain materials. So we put those brain into nylon bags and looked over there into, or to a certain time point uh, how they de degraded within the compost pile. And as you can see initially uh, they zero for sure nothing. Then I, already after seven days close to 100% of our material uh, disappeared on a trimetal base. The next thing was um, we went very curious what is going on and who is responsible so we were looking at the genetic fingerprinting with molecular methods and what we found was that each of the lines here this is a uh, yeah, like in the show CFI, um, CSI, we had a, a number of different uh, bacteria and on the bottom fungi, which over time uh, digested our substrate, and those uh, microbial communities were shifting over time. Um, this could be in response of the temperature because the temperature went up. Some of them couldn't resist the heat and then other bacteria or fungi showed up. Uh, here are just a few examples. On the brain tissues we took some pictures and this here is not a rainforest. These are some fungi we identified after 14 days. And on the other side uh, large communities of bacteria on top of the brain. Um, yeah, jump on, let's jump on to pathogenic microbes. What did we do? So we looked at spores, 
bacteria and virus, um, we choose as model the Newcastle disease virus. And in all of our studies, they didn't survive longer than seven days. And then they were not detectable anymore. Another example was Campylobacter uni. And he uh, survived up to 112 days in our example, so he was way more resistant to compost conditions. Then uh, we had another one, uh, this microbacterium. But I have to say, uh, we stored the, the compost pile at minus 30 degrees Celsius. And it was kind of difficult to heat the compost pile up, or the compost by itself had difficulties. So it took about 20 to 30 days until it reached temperatures around 40 and uh, never developed temperatures very high. So this might be one of the reasons to uh, do this uh, research again, but it's still inconclusive. The other one, a very common uh, pathogen is E. coli. Um, we put those uh, E. coli into either tubes or the nylon bags. Um, we are checking for the survival of those. The vials we did to exclude uh, the, outer, uh, the manure within the vial was autoclaved. So we just wanted to check is it just a uh, temperature effect or do uh, the communities uh, degrade or destroy the E. coli bacteria. And as you see already in uh, week one, we had a big decline. And then uh, over two weeks and larger time points, there were no E. coli left in our compost piles. Another interesting part is we started to look at Bacillus and, uh, endospores. And in the long run, our research is going to investigate uh, anthrax endospores. Here we use some uh, uh, spores from uh, uh, Bacillus lichenniformis. And because uh, we could use them uh, in a field, I would there without the risk of uh, spreading the disease around. And what we found on top is the baseline for our control vials. We kept it under lab, uh, uh, lab conditions at 21 degrees. We had shown a number of effects on the endospores which were terminated over time. And this was especially the case uh, for for our west pile, and our west pile, if you remember, had higher temperatures than the east pile. So the effect was due to high temperatures, um, something we don't know yet, but uh, still we had a big reduction. If you look, it's a log 10 scale. We had from uh, log 8 to uh, log 6, which is a 99% or more than 99% reduction for endospores within those piles. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's jump on to uh, prion degradation and just to show what we worked on or how it's defined. So prion diseases we have it in sheep uh, and then in wildlife, uh, mad cow disease and uh, COD and humans. And the background for the prion disease and the stability of those is the misfolded prions, they are so tight that close to no enzyme is able to break the structure. So they should be also very persistent with, uh, uh, under environmental conditions or even during composting. And we tried to test this hypothesis. One more time, uh, if you have to deal with uh, prions, we have areas of uh, specified risk materials here highlighted in color. So it's mainly all the uh, tissues related to nerves, uh, next to the backbone, for sure the brain, the eyes, and also uh, within the uh, small intestine of uh, animals. So what we did is we used uh, 
two trials. One we did under level three uh, lab conditions because we didn't want to use a BSE outside on the field. And then we had an uh, outside uh, trial in large compost piles where we used a modified uh, scrapey prior. So in order to look at the degradation, uh, what we created, I call them manure cookies. And those uh, manure cookies were inoculated with a scrapey grain homogenate. And then we put this into those mesh bags and nylon bags, and they went into our uh, lab scale composters. And we jump right into our results. So what we did, uh, we used uh, zero or 50-50 dilutions down to the minimum what we were able to pipe at. And as you see, uh, our detection limit went very, very low. But after 28 days of composting in this uh, lab scale uh, composters, we were not able to detect those uh, prions anymore. So we concluded there's a dec uh, degradation takes place. Because of the, sensi or the, um, the sensitivity of the system plotting is not very high, and uh, usually only bioassays are recognized we went to a different approach and we labeled uh, stainless steel beads uh, with uh, this mass and diameter shown here with uh, prions and they were then on the surface of those uh, stainless steel beads and we put those into the composter and we drive them over several uh, time points, collected them and then we went into a bioassay with um, a mouse model or a hamster model. So uh, let's jump back. Um, there was a different approach. Um, we also put this on membrane. And initially, we tried to uh, feed those uh, membranes with the prions to the animal. But they didn't like this diet. And after we uh, made it a fine powder, then uh, the animals took it, but they never uh, showed any clinical symptoms. So the oral route wasn't the best way to go. That's why we choose the stainless steel beads and then planted them direct, directly into the brain of the animals. So what we have seen from the field scale compost was all animals we tested after zero days uh, developed clinical signs of the disease. And the longer the composting lasted, the lesser amount of animals showed clinical uh, signs of the disease. Uh, like here, after 230 days, one in five animals only sh showed the disease after 250 days. So the dose must be very low, and most of the prions were already destroyed. In summary, uh, we uh, can see for a lot of pathogens a huge reduction during composting if it is well done and the temperatures are at least above 55 degrees Celsius. We show a reduction of at least 90 to 99.99% uh, and the higher the temperature goes and the longer the temperature lasts in the compost fire, uh, the higher the likelihood we deal properly with the pathogens. Yeah, and this leads me to the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much.